Well, good morning, Monica Stenberg here with you, and we are on day six of our 40-day journey in fasting the secular media, social media, news, various voices that we hear constantly in this world. In a time when our world is so filled with information and voices, it is imperative that we take time out to separate ourselves, to sanctify ourselves. And that's what this journey on this 40-day of fasting is. It's a time of sanctification, setting ourselves apart from the things of the world as much as we're able, especially the voices, so that we can really attune our ear to the voice of the Father. So I want to encourage you as you're on this journey with us to continue on, to allow the voice of the Father to speak to your heart and to continue to shut down voices. Some of you may feel like you've done really well at uh, shutting off social media and other things. Others may feel like I haven't done that great of a job, but I just want to encourage you and urge you to continue on, to continue to take the time to close down uh, voices that you don't need to hear. You might even be identifying voices. It could be in the form of some friends that have a lot to say. Again, I'm not saying avoid everyone, but make choices to Shut down voices that you just don't need to hear in this season so that your ears will be wide open to what the Holy Spirit is speaking to His church, which is you and me in this season. So as you know, Pastor Jerry has, uh, by the direction of the Holy Spirit, chosen 40 scriptures that we'll be going through each day. And today, day six, we are going to be looking at James 5, starting at verse 16 from the New Living Translation. But before we do, let's take a moment and pray and ask the Holy Spirit to come and speak to us through this passage. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we're able to come before you because of the precious blood of Jesus that has been shed for us and made a way for us to enter into the family of God. So we come before you this morning. We ask you to, by your spirit, speak to us through your word. We thank you for your written word. We thank you that you didn't leave us guessing or wondering, but you have given us your holy word, which was, has been inspired by you. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness that we, men and women of God, may be complete, lacking nothing. So we thank you and we ask that today you would move by your spirit and speak to each of us through your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, join me this morning by looking at James chapter 5, verse 16 in the New Living Translation. It says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other that so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Oh, I just love this passage. The New King James Version says that, that we ought to confess our sins to one another and pray for one another that we might be healed. And I want to encourage you regarding this first part of that passage that it is a key here. It says, so that we may be healed. So for those of us who need to be healed, which really is all of us in some way, for some it's physical healing. For others, it's relational healing. It could be spiritually being healed. There's different areas of our life that need recovery and healing. And this passage right here is a key, an instruction in righteousness. Okay, a direction from the Lord, from his word. It says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other. And so in this season, as we're coming before him, I want to just encourage you to, to join with me as we will here in just a few minutes. We're going to pray. We're going to begin to confess our sins. And, and even sometimes we need the courage to confess our sins to, to one another. Now, this isn't the direction that you should jump uh, on social media or jump out with everybody and start telling everybody every terrible thing you, you have done. That, that's not what this is saying. It is, however, highlighting the importance of communicating with others, maybe a person you've sinned against, someone that you've wronged, coming back and just admitting, I, I'm sorry, I did this. Whether you meant to or not, just confessing and admitting that I have harmed you or wronged you. And so, so often, since we're all human, we all have done this. We have spoken out of turn and, and we've done many things. Some things we're 
quite ashamed of and embarrassed of. But this passage here tells us how we can be healed. It says, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another. It doesn't say just go confess. It doesn't just say walk by and say, oh, sorry, sorry. Sometimes we throw that around a lot. I'm sorry, but, but do, are we confessing our sin or are we just blowing someone off? Well, I want to encourage you in this season to think about areas of your life where you need to be healed. I, I believe that many addicts, those struggling under addiction, as I once did, will find that this right here is a key that unlocks the bondage of addiction. When you begin to confess your sins, notice it doesn't say confess other sins. It doesn't say go point the finger at other people for what they've done, including if we feel like what they do did has caused us to sin, which is often there's a connection between sins of others and traumas and abuse and different things that have happened in our lives that lead us to make wrong choices. And that's real. However, the Bible teaches us how to be healed. It says, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. And I believe this morning, as we just begin a process of confessing our sins and even asking God to help us to confess our sins and to know where the safe and appropriate place to confess our sins are and with who and how to pray for one another, I believe we're going to see so many addictions fall off, sickness and disease removed. The word of God is true and does not lie. And he gives us great instruction here. I, I firmly believe that this particular passage is a key to healing. It's clear. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other that you may be healed. Confessing your sins doesn't always mean that you'll be able to resolve the issues or fix the damage that's been done, but it does say here that it opens up a spiritual and supernatural dynamic for healing, and that has the power to change everything. This passage goes on to say that the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. I want to remind you this morning of how powerful your prayers are, how powerful that, that it produces great power, it says. And, and let me just say this, the earnest prayer of a righteous person. Okay, sometimes you say, yeah, but I don't feel so righteous. You know, I've sinned, I've messed up. It could be past sin and shame that still reminds you of, of who you once were. It could be things that you do even now, slip-ups, failures, areas where you've not seen breakthrough or healing comes and those thoughts continue to remind you that you're not righteous. But I'm here to tell you that our righteousness is not of ourselves. Our righteousness is of God. It is not through your good works. It is not through your good behavior. The, the righteousness of God that we possess is in Christ because Christ died, shed his blood and washed us clean and gave us his righteousness. And so it's on that ground that we stand when we pray. And therefore, we can confidently believe this says that the earnest prayer of a righteous person, you and me, righteous because of the blood of Jesus, has great power and produces wonderful results. Well, I believe this morning as we begin the process, which I pray will be an ongoing process for you and for me. We're going to begin this morning praying, but I hope that this will just be the beginning of a, of a new pattern in your life, of applying this passage of confessing your sins and praying for those who have sinned against you and for those that you have sinned against, praying for one another so that you might be healed. And I pray that you will do that with confidence, knowing that it's releasing great power and producing wonderful results. Will you join me this morning as we pray together, as we come in this 40 days, trusting that God is meeting us, hearing us, speaking to us, and directing us. Let's go before the Father this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, the name above all names. 
We thank you, God, for your goodness and your kindness. Oh, would you just take a few minutes with me here and begin to declare his goodness? Just take a few seconds here and declare his goodness, his faithfulness, his kindness. Oh, Lord, you're kind and merciful. You have not assigned blame to me, even for my own sins. You have washed me with the blood of Jesus. You have provided a sacrifice, your very son, to pay for my sins. You have been kind and good. Thank you, Lord. Oh, just thank him. Would you, with your own mouth, thank him. Thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus that has cleansed me and washed me and made me righteous. Yes, he's made you righteous. Thank him for making you righteous. Declare with your mouth that that you are righteous and therefore your prayer has great power. Oh Lord, teach us. Teach us to pray. Teach us to be earnest in our prayer. To be committed, to be passionate, fervent in prayer because we know that it will produce great power and wonderful results. Oh, Holy Spirit, even now, come and empower us and pray through us. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your direction through your word. We confess our sins to one another. Lord, we pray that we would become a people, starting with us right here in this moment, starting with me. Just tell them, start with me, Lord. Start with me, Lord. Make me a person who finds it easy to confess my sin, my shortcomings, my failures to others that I need to confess to and and cause me to be a person who confesses my sins and prays for those among me, among us. Lord, I thank you. Make us those people. Make us people of prayer and confession, healing. We thank you, Lord, that as we do, your healing is coming. And even this morning, we just confess that we are generally selfish. We confess it, Lord. I confess I I am selfish and, and often think of what I want and what I need. And therefore, I'm not thinking of what others around me need. So I confess it, Lord, and I pray that you would help me to be better at considering others and that you would help and and bless those around me that I would be better to them. Lord, make us the people we ought to be. This morning, I want to encourage you to lift up those areas that are coming to mind even now. Confess your sins, and we're going to pray. Lord, we're, we're trusting you to heal us. So even this morning, I just sense the Lord is saying that we need to confess those things about ourselves. Lord, I confess that, that not only am I selfish, but as a human being that I'm, I lean toward rebelliousness. Even though it's not what I want, my, I do. I lean toward rebelling and, and choosing what I want over your word. But Lord, I don't want to do that. I want to choose you. I confess my tendency to have it my way instead of your way. Oh, Lord, I confess. Oh, just confess this morning those areas of, I just believe the Lord is saying we are going to be healed as we confess this morning. The Bible says that rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. So, Lord, I confess that I have been rebellious, disobedient, whether it be to leaders or the parents or authority of any kind to your word. Lord, I confess this part of my nature and I pray, Lord, that you would help us, especially as Americans. We're often a rebellious people and we, we in fact take pride in our, we call it independence and different things. But Lord, we confess that we choose our own way often and we 
We want to be like you. We want to follow you. We want to be submitted to the kingdom of God in everything. We don't want to rebel against the ways of the kingdom any longer. And so, Lord, I know that you're healing us this morning. I believe the Lord is healing us of the effects of witchcraft that have come into our lives through rebellion as we've confessed. I have been rebellious. I extremely was rebellious when I was young, but there are threads of it still, and I want no part of it. I want no part of it. Thank you, Lord. Heal your church, the people of God. Remove rebelliousness from us. Stubbornness. The Bible says that stubbornness is the is the sin of, of idolatry. It's like idolatry. Well, we wouldn't want to be involved in idolatry, but yet we are stubborn still sometimes. Lord, I pray, I confess that, that I am stubborn and, and I, I live in the midst of a stubborn people sometimes in this country and in my own family. And Lord, I confess it. And I pray, Lord, that you would heal us Forgive us, cleanse us, wash us, and break the power of the enemy in our life as we come before you. I pray that you would make us a people of confession and prayer, and that great power would come forth from our lives because of it, and that there would indeed be wonderful results in our families, in our own hearts, in our neighborhoods, in our cities. Oh, as we begin to close right now, it's last moments, would you just pray that over, that God would release wonderful results to our prayers as we pray for our families. You might want to name some of your family members, mothers, fathers, siblings. Maybe it's children and grandchildren. In fact, it's all of those in the name of Jesus Lord, we pray today that as you are making us into a people of prayer, that we will see great power and wonderful results come to our families, our cities, our state, and our nation, and ultimately to the world. Lord, move through your people and release great power. We look forward to the wonderful results we're going to see. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, this is day six. Stay with us. Let's continue to pray and fill our hearts with the word of God. Let's open our mouth wide and declare his word is truth, regardless of our opinions and our thoughts and even our feelings. God's word is true. Have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching today. To not miss out on any of our videos, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And by the way, if you're interested in starting a house church, whether under The Rock, a four-square church, or under Solid Lives, our global discipleship ministry, then go to one of those websites and hit house churches. Go to therock.com for The Rock and solidlives.com for Solid Lives. We'd love to partner with you to start a house church and to advance the kingdom of God together.